Hi, in this video we are going to show you how to install the tools required for this class on your machine. This video is for people using the Linux operating system. If you are on a different operating system, check the Getting Started section in the video lectures part of the class website. Everything that we show in this video is also explained in text on the Tools Setup wiki page on the class website. So we go to the Tools Setup page and we see that there are three things that we need to install for our class. The first one is the JDK, the Java Development Kit, which is the runtime environment on which Scala programs are executed. The second one is SBT, a build tool for Scala, which you will also be using for submitting your um, assignment solutions to Coursera. The third one is the Scala ID for Eclipse, which is the ID that we are going to use in this class. Okay, so let's get started by installing the JDK. In the section installing the JDK, there are three subsections for different operating system. And in this video, we are going to look at the part um, related to Linux. While recording this screencast, I am on an Ubuntu system and therefore these are the instructions that apply to my system. If you are using a different Linux distribution, you will have to do uh, the JDK installation differently. So on Ubuntu, the only thing that we need to do is start the terminal and uh, install OpenJDK using apt-get. To start the terminal, I just click on dash home in Ubuntu and I search for terminal and I can launch the terminal. Since we will be using the terminal a lot in this tutorial, I will uh, lock it to the launcher and make it available more quickly. Okay, so the command to install uh, OpenJDK on Ubuntu is uh, the following, sudo apt get install OpenJDK 7 dash JDK and uh, you have to enter your password and then apt-get will ask you to confirm and now it will download and install the JDK. Okay, once that apt-get has finished installing the JDK, we want to make sure that everything has been set up correctly. We go back to the tool setup page and we uh, read the section verifying your setup. So what we have to do is starting a new terminal. So we close the existing one and start a new one. And then we have to type Java dash version. Now you should see the version number of the JDK that you just installed. Okay, since this worked fine, we are closing the terminal window and moving on to the second step. The second step is installing SPT. In order to install SPT, it has to be downloaded from this URL. So we simply click the URL, we save the file and Firefox will send it to the download folder of my home directory. So we go to the home directory, download folder and we see this SPT archive. So now we have to extract the archive. One way to do this in Ubuntu is right clicking on the file and just selecting extract here. Okay, so the SPT folder that has now been created contains a bin directory, which in fact contains the executable for SPT. So since SPT is a program that we might want to use in the future, I'm going to move it to a different location. So I uh, cut the SPT folder and uh, in my home directory, I create a new folder, which, is, which I call uh, applications and I paste the SPT folder in there. Okay, so let's go back to the tool setup instructions. So we already unpacked the archive and now what we need to do is adding the bin directory of the SPT installation that we just downloaded to the path environment variable. In order to do that, you have to open the file .bashrc, which is in your home directory in a text editor. The easiest way to open that file is to open a terminal and typing g edit and then dot bash rc. This will open the text editor with the bash rc file. Now, in order to add SPT to the path, 
We go back to the setup instructions wiki page and we copy the export command that we need to add to the bash rc file. We copy it and we go back to gedit and we scroll down to the end of the file and just paste the command. Now in fact you have to update the path to your spt directory with the real path on your system. So the place where I installed it is in dash home and then my username luc and then that slash applications in spt bin. Okay, so I close the gedit text editor, I save my changes and now I have to verify that the spt has been installed correctly. In order to do that I have to open a new terminal window because the changes to bash rc will not be applied to existing terminal sessions. So I close my terminal, I open a new one and in order to test spt I type spt-h. As expected I see a help message from spt so everything is fine. Ok, so now we close the terminal window and the last thing that we need to do is installing the Scala IDE for Eclipse. The Scala IDE for Eclipse with all the plugins and settings that we need for the course can be downloaded from the following URL. So I open this page, a new tab, and I scroll down to the download links. Now you just have to select um, the Eclipse distribution which matches your operating system. In my case I'm on a Linux system with uh, 32 bits. So I download this file and uh, save it in the downloads folder. Ok, once the download of the Scala ID has finished, I can close the download window, close the download page for the ID and open the download folder in my home directory. Next, we unpack the downloaded Scala IDE package using uh, the same mechanism as we used before for SPT. So we right click on the file and we select Extract here. Okay, again, since the Scala IDE is an application that we will continue using in the future, I uh, right click on the new Eclipse folder, select Cut, then I go to my home folder and into Applications. I right click and select paste. In order to start Eclipse, I simply open the Eclipse folder and double click on the Eclipse ec executable. When starting Eclipse, you always have to define which workspace you are going to use. We recommend that you create one workspace for this class, which you then can reuse for all the assignments of the class. Ok, I will do that right now. So I click the Browse folder to go to my file system, I go to my Home folder and I create a new folder which I call Proc Fun Workspace. Ok, I select the folder and click OK and then I start Eclipse. Ok, so this is the Scala ID. In order to verify that everything is set up correctly, we go back to the Setup Instructions wiki page. On the bottom of the page, there is a tutorial on how to create a Hello World project in Eclipse. So I will do this right now inside Eclipse. In order to create a new project, you select File, New, Scala Project from the menu and you give the project a name. Hello World and you click Finish. Now we will create the Hello World program file. So we open the Hello World project, we right click on the source folder and we select New Scala Object. You have to give the object a name, so in this case we will use Hello and we will put the object into a package, uh, in this case package Greeter. Ok, now the source code for Hello World can be again found on the wiki page. So we go back to the wiki page and we scroll down a bit to find the source code of the Hello World application. We select the code, right click and copy, we go back to Eclipse 
and uh, we paste the code. Okay, now when we save the file, you will notice that Eclipse already compiled the file. Since this file defines an executable application, you can directly run it inside Eclipse. The easiest way to do this is right-clicking on the hello.scala source file, selecting run as Scala application. You will then see the output of the Hello World program on the bottom of the screen. Good, so the last thing that we are going to show you in this video is a brand new feature that has been implemented for the Scala IDE. The feature is called the Scala Worksheet and it gives you a very interactive console to work with Scala. In order to create the Scala Worksheet, you have to right click on a package, select New and then select Scala Worksheet. You have to give the worksheet a name and uh, click Finish. Okay, I have to make this window a bit bigger. Okay. Every expression that you type into a worksheet will be evaluated on the fly. In order to demonstrate that, we go back to the tool setup instructions. We scroll down to the end and we copy the statements that are at the end of the screen. We go back to Eclipse and, and we paste this code into the worksheet. Okay, so once you save the file, Eclipse will immediately evaluate all the expressions in the worksheet. So what we do here is we define a value x to be 1. We define a function increase, which uh, returns its argument increase, increased by 1. And we test increase by invoking it, and we pass the value x into the function. And you can see that the result of passing x into increase is the value 2. Now you can easily go back in a worksheet and change some definitions. For instance, now we change x to be 5. And once you save the file, the entire worksheet is re-evaluated and the resulting value now is 6.